Well, the thing about Burn Rubber uh, was that it was, the name of it was there. So Burn Rubber was a store that was uh, up and running. It was, uh, it was open for like four years before me and my partner Rick bought it and took it over. So Burn Rubber was a store, it was a dope store. They had, you know, exclusive kicks and it was like, it was a boutique. And then when we took it over, we kind of took it to the next level. So we were in there and we, and like Rick comes from a marketing background. Like he went to college for marketing. I, I just come from trying to do cool shit. You know what I'm saying? So when we, we would be in there bored as hell, right? And, and like we, since we bought the store from someone else, you know, when we would, the file, we would go through the file cabinets, right? Cause we were cleaning up stuff. So we were going through the file cabinets and we saw um, like some like sketches and it was from uh, and it, one of the old employees. And it was literally like this cyborg chef type thing serving up kicks on a platter. And we was like, yo, that shit is dope. We should put that on the t-shirt. And uh, we hit him up and we literally like, he charged us like a pair of shoes. Like we gave him a pair of shoes and he was like, yo, you can have it. And then we got it digitized and it was like it's a it's a whole body like it's a whole thing right so we, we went to new era the first thing we wanted to do was get it on a new era hat so the first new era hat uh we 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 got made was the whole body but it was it was uh it was so detailed that they couldn't make it the puff letters and i'll never forget this it's one of one of the reasons like marv was one of the realest niggas ever we that it was we did that hat in detroit colors a, a blue a navy and white and a navy and orange and uh, that was the first hat we ever did. Marv came in the store and I think we, if, tell me if I'm lying, I think we tried to give him a hat because he's Marv one, right? And he was like, nah fam, I'm buying this shit. And he bought, and I told him that day, I said, you'll never buy another hat from me again. You know what I'm saying? And from that point on, that man, every hat we ever did, we gave him a hat. But it was because it was him, he did that and uh, Mike Posner did that and we said we anything we ever do and we, we make it in your size you, it's all you but that's where the, that's where the brand of what burn rubber came from the reason that it's a, it's it's just you just see like the head of it is because the new era rep told us if we wanted it raised we it couldn't be so detailed so we were like oh we just take the face the the, the face and the hat and he was like, yeah, we can blow that up a little bit and, it, and raise it. And then the, like the rest is history. The, these guys was wearing it, Big Sean, like all these people. And then it just became this thing around Detroit and around the Midwest that like, it was like you had to have one. The collaborative efforts that we're able to pr uh, kind of produce is, is what I was saying about the, those, those authentic relationships that uh, the, the, the bigger the bigger brands will never be able to authentically portray, right? So T Grizzly is putting out an album. You know, I've I've met T Grizzly, like even like we've already done some, but even before, like I didn't I didn't come up with T Grizzly, right? I didn't I didn't come up with any of his people. Uh, but he he's he's made it to a certain level and he and he he expects a certain quality uh, of uh, the, the music that he produces and the and the the videos that he that he produces and things like that and uh and just business and uh there there's a a correlation with the boutique world of of, of some things that i have going on you know owning owning burn rubber so going back to culture right yeah t grizzly could call Foot Locker at whatever mall and go but how cool is that you know what i'm saying like how cool like when you was a kid coming up, you didn't go to Foot Locker to see, you know what I'm saying? Like you went to you went to the local spot. So it's it's that respect factor. I mean, like that like we both have a mutual respect. And then one thing I tell when I tell I talk to people a lot of times about just about business in general. And one and the first thing, the main thing that I say is uh, all business is dealt on relationships. And that's period, right? Going back to you know, playing basketball as a kid and, and wondering like, yo, this kid is better than that kid. Why is that kid playing? It's because his uncle is the coach. It's a relationship, right? 
T Grizzlies handlers or managers or A&Rs or whatever made a call because of a relationship with the, even if it's not, if not a direct relationship, it can be a relationship that they had with somebody that said, when you go to Detroit or you go to that area, or, well, he's from Detroit, but when, you know, if you're gonna do something around the way, you gotta go to Burn Rubber, right? You gotta go to Burn Rubber and you gotta do your in-store, your release at Burn Rubber uh, for whatever reason, you know? So that's that's how it is. Like we've done, and that, and that, and that even goes to like sneaker collaborations and clothing collaborations. Everything is based on relationship, man, everything. So, you know, somebody makes a call and somebody says, yo, we trying to do this. And it's like, yo, that makes, it makes sense. It makes sense for T Grizzly to come to Burn Rubber and, you know, take a couple pictures and, and get that, that, that real connection with real people. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of those guys get to a certain point where they, they are, you know, they, they have to be disconnected from the everyday person, you know? So they being able to come somewhere where they feel comfortable, they're not looking over their shoulders, worrying about blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And they come and it's, you know, it's just a real authentic connection. And that's like, we've had everybody at the store from the, you know, the Clips to Wale to Fab. Where I see me in the future uh, is diver diversifying the, you know, my life, which I'm already, you can already see that I'm starting to do. <laughs> As far as uh, the, the the boutique world of things and the store, you know, I really believe that. Remember, I said you, you're gonna have to be special. Like I feel that I'm that I'm special, and I feel that the people that are around me and the people that I work with and the, the relationships that I have allow me to be special and allow me to. Uh, to, to at least play in that in that world of being that one store in that one city that's really special that 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 they that they continue to do business with you know what I mean for a lot of people I don't think that's the case you know but it's kind of like you know what's that saying you uh you t like tie your camel or whatever I don't even know with the whole thing but tie your camel because you don't know what the, what's in the future you know but at the same time it's like five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't know where I would be right now, you know, 